Mr. Morelli. Stanley Almodovar, Amanda Alvier, Oscar Aracena Montero, Rodolfo Ayala, Antonio Devin Brown, Daryl Burt II, Angel Candelaro Padro, Juan Chavez Martinez, Luis Daniel Condi, Corey James Canal, Kevin Crosby, Dianca Drayton, Simon Adrian Carrillo Fernandez, Leroy Valentin Fernandez, Mercedes Marisol Flores, Peter Gonzalez Cruz, Juan Ramon Guerrero, Paul Terrell Henry, Frank Hernandez, Miguel Angel Honorato, Javier Jorge Reyes, Jason Benjamin Josephat, Eddie Justice, Anthony Luis Florian Odisla, Christopher Andrew Leonen, Alejandro Barrios Martinez, Brenda Lee Marquez McCool, Gilberto Ramon Silva Menendez, Kimberly Morris, Akira Monet Murray, Luis Omar Ocasio Capo, Geraldo Ortiz Jimenez, Eric Ivan Ortiz Rivera, Joel Reon Panigua, Juan Carlos Mendez Perez, Enrique Rios Jr., John Nives Rodriguez, Xavier Emanuel Serrano Rosado, Christopher Sanvales, Yomari Solivan, Edward Sotomayor, Jr., Shane Tomlinson, Martin Torres, Jonathan Vega, Juan Velasquez, Luis Vielma, Frankie Velasquez, Luis Wilson Leon, Gerald Wright. All those in in favor of the resolution, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. <laughs> Mr. Morelli. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I note that uh, there is uh, no doubt some housekeeping. I understand we have a number of uh, guests in the chamber. If we could take some time to have introductions before we begin our work on resolutions. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pree for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, excuse me, Andy. Thank you. I'm pleased to introduce today Aaron Haru, who is a former Clinton County Deputy Sheriff who served in that department from March 2002 until February 2013. Aaron has cystic fibrosis. And after months of working as a deputy sheriff using an oxygen tank, he was forced to apply for disability retirement. On February 8, 2014, Aaron received a bilateral lung transplant at Massachusetts General Hospital. As a result of Aaron's personal determination and desire to live his life to the fullest extent possible, he has worked to beat all medical expectations returning to full health and physical condition, including returning to the ice to play hockey. The Massachusetts General Hospital medical director and the surgeon who performed the double lung transplant have both certified that Aaron Hero is physically fit to return to his position as deputy sheriff with absolutely no work restrictions. 
rather than continue with his guaranteed permanent disability benefits, Aaron has asked to be reinstated as a deputy sheriff. I want to thank the chair of the Government Employees Committee, Mr. Peter Abadi, and later today we will be passing, with your support, Bill Number A10226, which will give Aaron the ability to go back to work as a Clinton County Deputy Sheriff. With Aaron today, in support of his efforts as they have been over the years, are his wife Victoria, Clinton County Sheriff David Favreau, Major Michael Reed, Lieutenant Nicholas Leon, and Sergeant William Dominey. Mr. Speaker, I ask that you welcome Aaron Haru to this chambers as a young man who is living proof of the value of organ donations, a man who instead of sitting home being paid for doing nothing, wants to go back to work in a position that he loves and does very well. He's an all around nice guy and I want to add that as proud a moment as this is for Aaron, Victoria, and the Sheriff's Department, it's a very proud moment for me. As my last introduction in this assembly, I am honored to be able to recognize Aaron Haru as an inspiration to those who are suffering illnesses and those who have overcome hardships that no one would have given them credit for doing. Please welcome him here. Certainly, Aaron, on behalf of Mr. Pre, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. You've come on quite a morning. Thank you for sharing that morning with us. And to those who have come to support you from law enforcement, we thank you also for the work that you do on a regular basis and the work that you will return to, Aaron. Please always be welcome here uh, and also the significance of having Ms. Dupree give you her final introduction is most important to all of us. I hope you appreciate how important it is. Thank you so very much. Mr. Santa Barbara for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for an introduction. Today I'm very pleased to be joined by Samantha Bishop from uh, the city of Amsterdam in my district. She's a senior at Amsterdam High School who, who will be graduating this month. Samantha has shown tremendous dedication to her country by joining her school's junior reserve officers training corps as a freshman four years ago. She has been the commanding officer of her junior, uh, since her junior year and has proven herself to be an incredible leader with a strong commitment to serve. In addition to being a member of the drill team for four years and its captain for two years, she has the impressive de designation of being the first cadet in the Amsterdam JROTC program to reach the rank of cadet captain. She recently made history by becoming the first female recruit in New York State to enlist in the U.S. Army Infantry. She, scheduled, she is scheduled to leave for 13 weeks of training in Fort Benning, Georgia in January of 2017. She will be entering the Army with her service in the JROTC and an accumulation of college credits that has already earned her the rank of E2. She has received numerous awards for her service through JROTC, including the American Legion Medal for Scholastic, Scholastic Excellence, the American Legion Medal for Military Excellence, the Daughters of American Revolution JROTC Medal, and the Reserve Officers Association Medal. I'm very proud to have her joining us here in the chamber today, Mr. Speaker. She is joined by her father, Edward Bishop, her friend, Kaylee Jasper, U.S. Army Captain Vincent M Mortara, Sergeant First Class Robin Neeler, Staff Sergeant Jack Mueller, and First Sergeant Nicholas Frejo. Mr. Speaker, if you would welcome, all, welcome them all to the chamber and extend to them the cordialities of the House. Certainly. Mr. Dendecker on the same topic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank uh, 
my colleague, uh, Mr. Santa Barbara, as well as to congratulate Samantha Bishop, uh, graduating from Amsterdam High School this month, a uh, member of the Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps at Amsterdam High School, and uh, now going to be uh, the first recruit to join the United States Army Infantry. I think it's, a, it's an amazing honor. To, it's a, a wonderful way to show others on how leadership uh, will change our world, and this is the future of our world. We thank you very much for choosing the life of service to protect our country, and uh, we welcome you here today. Mr. Russell, on the same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, too, rise to welcome Samantha Bishop to the chamber today um, as the chair of the Subcommittee on Women Veterans and also as a representative uh, of the community that is the host to Fort Drum, New York, the home of the Army's 10th Mountain Division, the Light Infantry. There is a good chance that Miss Bishop can find herself living in my community in the near future, and I am tremendously excited for that event. She has distinguished herself as a member of the Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officer Training Corp, and I am sure that she will distinguish herself as a member of the United States Army. She is signing up for the front lines and for many, many, many deployments in her capacity as a member of the infantry. This is a major decision that she is making, but it appears to me that she is an extremely mature and strong individual uh, as she is graduating from high school and making this, this big decision, but doing so, uh, as you can see, with a tremendous amount of poise and dedication and desire to serve her fellow American. So I too want to add my list to the names of members welcoming her here today and I request that you extend to her all the cordialities of this house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Benedetto on the same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to rise and welcome to this chamber an extraordinarily uh, interesting young lady. At a time when young people her age are thinking about their future careers as an accountant, as, an, as a doctor, uh, as a teacher, um, this young lady is mature enough to look ahead and, and make a decision to enter into the service of our country. She's an extraordinarily young, bright young lady and who must be extremely mature. Uh, we wish her well in everything going forward. And please, uh, Mr. Speaker, add my voice and name to welcoming Ms. Bishop to the chamber and extending her all of the privileges of the House. Certainly. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Santa Barbara, Mr. Dendecker, Ms. Russell, Mr. Benedetto, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We are clearly impressed with the work that you've done so far to prepare you in life, and your choices are, are astounding and are to be a common, a, Acclaim also to those members of the uh, Army who have come here to support you and your family. Thank you so very much for joining us. You have obviously witnessed this morning the reason why we defend the freedoms that we have, because we are able to have that kind of discussion as we did this morning and that resolve to improve our freedoms in this country. Thank you that you have decided to be on that list. Thank you very much. Mr. Palomasano. Yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, my colleagues, thank you for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for a very, very special introduction. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, in the chamber, we are joined by a national champion. Uh, uh, Jayram Hath Hathwar from Pain and Post uh, just last month won the 2016 Scripps National Spelling Bee. Uh, J. Ram is uh, joined here by his uh, family members, uh, his mother, Ropa, his grandmother, Bag Rathi, and his brother, Sriram, who you might remember from two years ago, was also the 
Scripps National Spelling Bee champion. And I got to tell you, I remember when they were here two years ago, we put a little pressure on J-Rom saying, uh, I thought we'd be back, and sure enough, we're back. I got to tell you, we're so proud to have him here. Uh, and just to tell you a little bit about, a little bit about him, uh, he's 13 years old from Payne Post, New York. He's a seventh grade student at the Alternative School for Math and Science, uh, son of Jagadish and Rupa Hathwar. Uh He was one of 10 finalists during the competition. As it weeded its way down, he was then down to one of four at about 9.30 p.m. After 17 rounds, it was finally down to two spellers, J. Ram and Nihar Janga, who will become close friends. J. Ram spelled the following words, Echolatia, Ripieno, Lero. I didn't do that right, did I? That's right. I didn't do that right. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? Yeah, I'm not going to try to spell it either, so. So J. Ram successfully spelled those words, and after a marathon between the two spellers, for after 23 rounds, they each spelled two more words correctly through 25 rounds and were declared the cold national champions. Uh, when J-Rom's not uh, spelling words, he enjoys playing golf. He's inspired by his favorite golf player, Jordan Spite, uh, who encouraged him to work hard and practice. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm not a golfer either, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> who encouraged him to study hard. Uh, he has invited J-Rom to come down to the uh, uh, the 2000 uh, to the the Barclays uh, tournament for the Beth Page Flack down in August. Yeah, Barclays. Anyway, Jerome's is much more calm, cool, and collected than I am in delivering this uh, introduction. That's for sure. <laughs> and when Jerome's been on a world a whirlwind tour, he was down at New York and uh, ringing the opening bell for the stock exchange. He was on live with Kelly. Uh, he was out in California with Jimmy Kimmel just last week. He was up at uh, in the joint <laughs> session of Congress. Uh, it's really a privilege for me to be here, have him here, his family here uh, with us. I know uh, there's some avid spelling bee uh, watchers in this chamber, including our, our distinguished majority leader and some of his staff. Uh, but if you could just please welcome uh, this distinguished young gentleman. Uh, uh, give him your accolades, your thanks for what he accomplished, and, uh, and welcome him here to this uh, chamber. Uh, what a fine, fine young man. What a fine young family. And we're just so pleased to have him here with us today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Mr. Morelli. Yes, I, I certainly wouldn't want to step on my uh, distinguished colleague's uh, introduction. I only want to say that, uh, J. Ram, uh, I and my staff did watch you. Uh, this was, I felt like my knuckles, I was holding on as I was watching him, rooting for him. And I have to say, I don't think uh, my, uh, my good friend uh, mentioned this, but in the latter rounds during the, the sort of the sudden death, you actually misspelled a word. And, um, and I thought, oh, no, no, this can't be happening. And then the uh, young man who was uh, the last competitor also misspelled the word. Um, and, uh, and then J-Rom uh, basically uh, uh, finished, ran the table after that. And, uh, and, and uh, we're so excited. He's from, you know, uh, upstate New York, and uh, he and his brother, I remember when his brother was here when we honored him, and uh, J. Ron was, I'm going to be in there, and I'm going to, you know, hold up the family tradition, which he did. So, uh, and Nicole Malik, who works with me, she's the one who calls me and tells me when it's on television so I can watch it. So we watch the finals, and uh, we're all incredibly proud of you, and thank you for gracing our chambers, and uh, I want to join with Mr. Palmasano in offering congratulations. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Palmasano, Mr. Morelli, Jay Wan, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We celebrate your victory, Master Jay Wan. And as a family tradition, uh, I don't know if there are any other of you hiding in the background so that we can look for another champion. Three is great. Two is wonderful, but three is great. Um, so we, we want to welcome you, extend this, the courtesies of the floor, hope that you have enjoyed this experience and will continue to enjoy that. And I'm sure Scrabble is the game that's played in your house. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Mr. Saladino. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to introduce an outstanding Long Islander and an incredible young person with a great future, Michael LePetri. Michael is a 2015 Albany Law School graduate, where he graduated cum magna cum laude. He was editor-in-chief of the Albany Government Law Review. He won best or earned best advocate in the appellate uh, advocacy competition and was quite outstanding among the many excellent students at Albany Law. Prior to that, he graduated from Albany as an undergraduate. He co-founded the debate team, was an exceptional student, and represented his class as a senator at large. And this should be a special message to those who serve on the Higher Education uh, Committee. I found out there's no assembly, only a Senate. And how's that for a message? Uh, he's moved on to take his talents and use them in the professional world. Just one year out of Albany Law School, he is now the Assistant Corporation Counsel for the City of New York, representing members of the NYPD and the FDNY in civil actions where he has made it his job to represent and bring fairness to all New Yorkers, especially in New York City. He manages a caseload of all, over 200 cases and is a resident of the South Farmingdale Greater Massapequa community where this young man is an exceptional leader in the Lions Club, the Amvets, the Sons of Italy, to just name a few. I am very proud to introduce someone who has set a path for all young people to follow a path of success, of commitment to education, commitment to the community, and continues to make a, a tremendous difference. And I ask you, sir, to extend to him the courtesies of the House, as we are so fortunate to be visited by such an exceptional young person as Michael LePetri. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Saladino, the Speaker, and all the members, Michael, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We hope that you will enjoy and have enjoyed the proceedings. And as a Albany-trained lawyer, you've got quite a future. Thank you so very much. Ms. Tinney, for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, my distinct honor to interrupt the proceedings to introduce a very special man in the chamber today. His name is John Cerdulo, and I think he's in the back. I don't know where he's sitting. Here he comes. Uh, John is a Korean War veteran. He's here with his daughter, Catherine, who's also a Marine near and dear to my heart as my son's uh, currently an active duty Marine. His wife, Claire, his daughter-in-law, Darlene Chardulo from Walden. Uh, Mr. Chardulo uh, received the following accommodations in the, in the Vietnam War. He was, or I mean, I'm sorry, I apologize, the Korean War, the National Defense Service Medal, the Korean Service Medal, two bronze stars, Combat Inf Infantryman Badge First Award and the United, United Nations Service Medal. He was born on February 21st, 1933 in Brooklyn, New York, and he's the second of four children born to his parents. Corporal John Cachardillo proudly served his country as a member of the United States Army from July 8th, 1952 until April 30th, 1954. During this time, he fought in the third Korean winter and Korea summer of 1953, battles which are known as Pork Chop Hill. After completing his military service, this esteemed veteran married Claire Faraci, Faras, Faras, there she is, uh, on May 4th, 1957, and together they became the proud parents of five children, Michael, Catherine, Kathy, who I mentioned before, Douglas, Richard, and John Peter, the loving grandparents of 15 grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, and recently they celebrated their 59th wedding anniversary. John has been called upon to contribute his time and talents to countless civic and charitable endeavors and has always given, given of himself. He served as president of the Walden Little League, head of the Village of Walden basketball program, director of the Knights of Columbus, president of the Walden Rotary and umpire and chief of the Walden Little League. In addition, John was the home plate umpire in the Little League World Series game in 1982 played between Canada and Taiwan the first Little League game ever televised on ESPN. 
We are so pleased to have John and his family here and so honored by his honorable service to our nation in the Korean War and, uh, and the Battle of Pork Chop Hill, as it was known. And I would be grateful, Mr. Speaker, if you could please welcome this wonderful family filled with community service uh, to this chamber. Thank you so much. Certainly. On behalf of Ms. Tinney, the Speaker, and all the members, John, and your great family, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We commend you on a life of service, both in the Korean War and as you come back to your community. You have made the most of your life. Thank you. Serving other people. Thank you so very much. And we applaud all of you for being here and sharing this day with us. Thank you so very much. Mr. Brindisi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's always great to uh, introduce a constituent from back home, especially when that constituent is the father of uh, an intern in our assembly intern program. Uh, Mr. Gary Ford is the father of Assemblyman Butler's and Assemblyman Ron Castorina's uh, intern, Julia Ford. He lives in Marcy, New York, which is in my district. Uh, he is a graduate of Utica College, a lieutenant in the U.S. Naval Reserve security group. Uh, he is the chief engineering officer of Shipwright Software in Utica. He is the president of Smart Touch Software Incorporated in Utica, and he is the owner of Yorkville Framing and Art Gallery. Uh, Julia is a senior at Hartwick College and is majoring in political science and law. She did an outstanding job this session and is a dedicated, hardworking young woman that will someday be sitting in this chamber, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if you could please offer them all the cordialities of the House. Certainly. Mr. Butler on the same subject. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's not often that I say it, but uh, Mr. Bendisi was absolutely right uh, in, in his words he spoke. Uh, uh, Julie has done a wonderful job in our office, and we've really appreciated it. And I just learned today, uh, Mr. Ford and I actually worked together at Utica National Insurance for several years. So. Uh, we knew each other in a past life, and he cannot understand why my hair is darker now than it was then. So uh, <laughs> I just don't understand it. But anyway, I, I'm pleased to join in welcoming you here, and thank you for sharing your daughter with us. We appreciate her. Perhaps. Certainly, thank on you. behalf of Mr. Brindisi, Mr. Butler, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome this extraordinary family here to the New York State Assembly. We thank you for the work that you've done in supporting our our colleagues and you, sir, as a successful businessman, obviously have done the right thing in raising your daughter, and we can hardly understand Mr. Butler either. So we want to thank you so much for being here. We hope that you, know, you will enjoy the proceedings and did enjoy a very significant morning with us that really underlines what democracy is about. Thank you so very much. Mr. Morelli. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's been a lively morning already, although I think morning has slipped away. <laughs> lively morning and afternoon. Um, we are prepared to have local governments, I'm told, by Mr. Magnarelli, who gives me a thumbs up. I take that as a good sign. So if members of the Local Governments Committee could uh, move to the Speaker's Conference Room. Local Government Speaker's Conference Room, Mr. Magnarelli is on his way. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir, and that we could begin on page three of the main calendar by uh, beginning with resolution, starting with resolution 
554 by Mr. Dendecker. Clerk will read. Resolution number 1554, rules at the request of Mr. Dendecker. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim June 15, 2016 as Special Operations Forces Day in the state of New York and commending those military men from New York State who serve our nation as team members of the Special Operations Forces. Mr. Dendecker, on the resolution. Mr. Dendecker, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, specifically, this resolution is to One minute, honor Mr. Dendecker. We do need a little quiet so we may hear the member talk on the resolution. Quiet it down. Proceed, Mr. Dendecker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, this resolution is to honor uh, many of our servicemen who have served in the Joint Special Operations Command, which include the Army Green Berets, the Army Night Stalkers, the Army Rangers, the Navy SEALs, the Marine Force Recon, and the Air Force Special Tactics. Specifically, we'd like to talk uh, today a little bit about some of our colleagues that have served in the Navy SEALs. Uh, the Navy SEALs are organized, trained, and equipped to conduct a variety of special operation missions in all operational environments. Uh, the Navy SEAL has a USD SEAL Museum, known as the SEAL Museum, located in Fort Pierce, Florida. The National Navy SEAL Museum is the only museum dedicated solely to preserving the history of the Navy SEALs and their predecessors, including the underwater demolition teams, the Naval Combat Demolition Units, the Office of Strategic Services, Maritime Units, and the Amphibious Scouts and Raiders. It's important that we honor the men and women who served in our Special Forces operations so that we may pay tribute to their military actions that have helped this country uh, survive and, and thrive as it does now. So on this day, we are asking Governor Cuomo to proclaim Wednesday, June fifteenth, as Special Operation Forces Day in the state of New York. And I'm fully confident that all of my members will share and support this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hawley on the resolution. Are we good? We're good. It's an honor to recognize the United States Navy's uh, sea land teams, uh, better known by their acronym of SEAL. Uh, the SEALs are among the most elite warriors in our armed uh, services uh, of the nation. Uh, their rigorous training and consummate professionalism are actually legendary. Uh, they are the force of choice to conduct small unit operations that originate from and return to a river or a coastline, as well as being able to be dropped by parachute or inserted by aircraft. The SEALs had their origins in the underwater demolition teams, the UDTs of World War II. The Navy realized after the huge losses suffered by the Marines at Tawarawara, the first large-scale amphibious assault against a fortified position, that it was necessary for a unit to be formed that would aid in the removal of uh, at beachheads obstacles prior to their amphibious assault. They proved their value in numerous operations in the Pacific Theater. The UDTs operated during the landings on D-Day in Normandy. They suffered significant casualties on Omaha Beach where 91 out of 175 were killed or wounded, yet they managed to clear 700 yards of the beach to facilitate these landings. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy recognized the need for special warfare operatives, and the first two SEAL teams were formed from existing UDT units. The SEALs frequently demonstrated their special operation prowess during the Vietnam War and were rightly feared by the Viet Cong, who termed them the men with green faces. Today, the SEALs function in many capacities, as was shown in the book and movie about SEAL sniper Chris Kyle. They are frequently attached to other units to enhance the capabilities. It was a SEAL team that brought final justice to the architect of 9-11, Osama bin Laden. When the United States requires elite warriors to strike from air, land, or sea, it is the SEALs that get the call. Our nation is fortunate that we have men willing to sacrifice to preserve our way of life. God bless our brave SEAL teams. 
God bless anyone here that has served in the military, and thank you so much. Thank you, sir. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1555 rules at the request of Ms. Solage. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim August 2016 as Breastfeeding Awareness Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1556 rules at the request of Mr. Murray. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to declare September 2016 as Dystonia Awareness Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1557 rules at the request of Ms. Maliotakis. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim Saturday, September 17, 2016, as Puppy Mill Awareness Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1558 rules at the request of Ms. Maliotakis. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim October 9th, 2016 as Pandas Pans Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Disorders Awareness Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1559 rules at the request of Mr. Tedisco. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim October 2016 as Principals Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1560 rules at the request of Ms. Jean-Pierre. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim November 4th through the 10th, 2016, the week prior to our National Veterans Day, held yearly on November 11th as Veterans Awareness Week in New York State. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1561 rules at the request of Mr. Titone. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim November 2016 as Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1562 rules at the request of Mrs. Gunther. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim November 2016 as Home Care Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Morelli. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to uh, begin on page 15 of the main calendar, and we're going to begin consenting, starting with Rules Report 280 by Mr. Scartados. Clerk will read. Assembly 7480A, Rules Report number 280, Mr. Scartados, an act to amend the general municipal law and the vehicle and traffic law. Home rule message is at the desk. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. Mr. Morelli. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is our first vote of the day. So I'd like to ask members to cast their votes. And uh, those that uh, can hear our voice but aren't in the chambers, please make your way in for your first vote of the day. First vote of the day, members, at the sound of this call, please come into the chamber and vote. If you are at your seat, vote now. Thank you.